Welcome to this skill acquisition in sport video. In this video, we're going to be thinking about information processing. So we're going to focus in this lesson on two key questions. First of all, how do we process information to make in-game decisions? And secondly, then what is that information? What information does the player actually need to process in order to make those decisions? We're going to look at two different models. We're going, to look, we're going to look at a simple processing model and then we're going to expand it a little bit and give a little bit more depth of detail as we move through. Let's get started. So the first model is called the simple processing model. And that's because it's as simple as really we could possibly make it. It represents uh, what's going on um, in body and mind as we process the game that's going on around us and the requirements and the demands of the game and then select certain skills to then perform in order to meet the demands of that game. And we've just broken it down into three sections, nice and simple. Um, these three parts of this process, the input, the central part and then the output and that sounds pretty simple and that's obviously why it's called the simple processing model so what do we mean by input well input is any environmental information stuff that's going on around us as we're playing that might include the ball so as the ball moves and as we watch the ball uh, there's input coming via our eyes in particular as we watch the ball and the ball movements then maybe the movement of our teammates or the movement of opponents also we might have certain kinds of shouts and calls from our teammates there may be even other kinds of perceptive um, senses that we're we're relying on and all this counts as input into the process of uh, determining what skill to perform next or what skill to perform in response to environmental changes so the input essentially is any environment environmental information that we're we're aware of and that we're perceiving and that we're taking on board in order to make a decision about our skill choices so then what about the central stage well the central stage essentially is um, just to, in this simple model just encapsulates everything to do with making a decision decision making once we've got all that information from the external environment, we've got that information now, we're going to make a decision and we're going to make a decision by recognising maybe certain patterns of play, by perceiving the flight of the ball and so on and selecting a response that we have available to us. Maybe that response is available to us because we've practised it again and again, it's a skill that we've, we've honed and, and improved over time. So it becomes a response that's available to us. And we'll get into that in more detail, detail in just a moment. But essentially, at the central stage of the simple processing model, we've got all these things going on that are helping us to make a decision as to what skill to perform in that particular situation based on the environment that we see around us or that we experience around us. So then the output, very straightforwardly, is once we've made our decision, the output um, stage of the simple processing model simply refers to the execution of the movement itself. So that's sending the signals to the muscles and uh, causing the muscles to contract and the, uh, the, the skeleton to be moved and, and so on uh, in terms of how fast it should move and the speed and the direction and all these factors. The execution of the movement is the third and the final stage of the simple processing model. So that is, as it's described, a very simple way of thinking about what's happening in terms of our choice of skills as we're playing our sport. So there's information from the environment that comes in as the inputs, then we process it in some way and we make a decision internally about what to do in response to that information and then we execute that movement. One, two, three stages, input, central, output. So once you've performed your skill, hopefully now you've had some kind of impact on the game that you're playing. You've accessed the external environment through your senses and that information has come into your into your system, into your processing as an input. You've manipulated it, you've interpreted it, you've you've made a decision as to a skill and then that skill you've done your best to perform as well as you can given the demands of the environment but as soon as you've done that then whether it's a, a pass to a teammate or whether it's a, a run that you're going to make or whether it's your positioning on the court or whatever you have now changed the external environment and having changed the external environment 
you can begin the processing loop once more. So it's worth thinking of the simple processing model, not simply as a flow from input to the central uh, phase to output, but as a loop that includes feedback. Because as soon as a movement is made, whether it's your movement or someone else's movement, as soon as a movement is made, the external conditions are changed. And so new inputs arrive. And as you play your sport and as you participate in your game or whatever it might be, the, the external environment is repeatedly and constantly and consistently being changed. And so you have to again and again take those new inputs, process them, process those new inputs, make decisions and then decide on new outputs and enact them. So the simple processing model should be thought of as a, as a fairly basic uh, loop. I guess it's a feedback loop in, in some regards. So there's an input, you take in information from your environment. The central section, you're going to decide on what skill you should perform in response to that information, to that input. And then you're going to actually carry out that skill in order to try and have an influence, a positive influence on the game itself. Having done that then, everything is now changed and the processing it has to happen again. So we've got this processing loop. This simple processing model is a little loop, it's a little feedback loop um, that allows us to consistently again and again respond to the changing demands of a game. So what are some of the limitations of the model? Let's just pick up on two limitations of this model. Well the first one is there's a problem really with that central stage. Because the central stage, that's, let's be honest, it's a bit of a catch-all, it's a bit of a cop-out, just to say, we have an input, then stuff happens, and then there's an output. Well, what is that stuff that happens? What is actually going on in the central stage? It's something of a black box, isn't it? It's like, what's actually going on there? And the, this, this model is obviously, it's intended to be simple, um, but obviously the, the, the payoff for the simplicity of the model is its lack of detail. It doesn't really provide an account of how we go about choosing that movement response. It just says that we do. We just choose a response and then that response becomes our output. But how do we actually go about doing that? What, what are the steps in that central stage? Well, the model doesn't tell us. So that's a potential uh, pitfall or limitation of this model. A second limitation is that it fails to distinguish between um, types of feedback. And I've said here between internal and external feedback mechanisms. So if you think about it, and we'll come to this point again in just a second, if you think about it, the feedback, the things that are changing um, prior to the input, prior to the, um, the things that are changing in the environment, essentially, some of those things are happening outside of us. Those would be external things, but also some of those, those things are happening internally. And that might be the speed of muscle contraction. It might be speed of movement. It might be balance and those sorts of things. So there are internal and external feedback mechanisms that are happening that affect what's coming in in the input stage as we as we loop round in the model. And that's not made clear uh, by the model. So it's a basic model. So it's useful in some respects. But because it's so basic, it, it really falls down in a couple of key areas. Firstly, it doesn't really tell us much about what, what's happening in that central stage. And secondly, it doesn't really uh, distinguish between the internal and the external aspects of the feedback mechanism or the feedback loop. So this brings us to what's known as the expanded information processing model, the expanded information processing model. And this is based on um, work that's done by uh, by Welford in 1968. Uh, and there are essentially additional stages added to the model. So let's have a quick look at this. So in the expanded model, we're going to discuss five stages. And you can see some similarities already uh, to the previous model. The first stage and the final stage are the same. The first stage is the input stage. And so as a consequence, we're talking about the same sorts of stuff, that environmental information, the information about what's going on around you, your external experience, your external perception of the, the flight of the ball and so on. So that's that's the same. Um, but then we have three stages rather than a single central stage. 
and we're going to split that central stage into three sections or three sub stages perception then response selection and then response programming so by perception what we mean is the ability to identify a stimulus that's of relevance now if you're playing um, playing football playing soccer whatever it is there's loads of stimuli going on all around you but what's important is to be able to identify which are the important stimuli to focus on and then direct your attention to those stimuli because you could you could focus on the crowd, you could focus on the greenness of the grass, you could focus on the sound of the birds. You, there's all sorts of things you could focus on, you could direct your attention to. But in the perception stage, in the expanded information processing model, we're focusing on specifically those things that are relevant to making a decision as to what movement or skill to perform. So we need to not simply um, just take in external information. It's not just generic inputs as if we take in everything that's going on around us, but we specifically focus on, we attend to certain aspects of what's going on around us. Uh, and we, we refer to that as stimulus identification. So there'll be some things more important than other things. The ball, of course, would be very high up the list of important things that we'd be focusing on in a match. Then after that, the next, uh, the next stage or the next um, step in this expanded model is response selection. So response selection, another word for this, I guess, is decision making. And it's at this point, having focused on the particular stimuli that are of relevance, we're going to use that focus to determine what the right response should be in this situation. And so we're going to borrow from all of our previous experiences um, to decide what the right response should be. We're going to make a decision. So we're going to select the appropriate response at this point. So having selected the appropriate response, what we need to do now is we need to take that response and convert it in some way into movement, into the skill. So the next stage is what's known as response programming and response programming is essentially the action or the activation of a neuromuscular response so on the on the back of the decision that's made during the response selection step or stage then some kind of motor program or or plan a motor plan is put together um, and then that informs that that plan is then used to inform the muscles as to what movements are required. So you can think of this to some extent as moving from the cognitive to the physiological. It's the, it's the bridge from the thinking process to the doing process, from the cognitive to the physiological. So we've got this activation of this, uh, this plan or this program that's been constructed cognitively, internally, and is now being activated and ready to be sent to the muscles themselves. Sometimes we refer to that as an effector, effector mechanism. So it's an effector mechanism. And so then the final stage, as you can imagine, very similar to the, uh, the simple processing model, the final stage is the output stage where we execute that chosen movement so that's where we recruit the muscles in particular orders in particular with particular strengths of contraction force and so on in order to actually perform the skill that we've selected so there's something um, important or a couple of important things to add here uh, one of which is about how we actually go about selecting our response and I'm, I, I mentioned this uh, just in passing just now but how do we actually select our response well, essentially, we need to select our response based on our memories of previous movements. So our skilled movements, uh, it's, it's assumed, at least in this, in this model, that we have a bank of memories from which we can draw to select the right response, which then becomes the, the, the programmed response that's ultimately sent out uh, to the muscles to perform. So... This links, of course, if, if this model is true and if this perhaps perhaps true is not the right word, if this if this model is an accurate depiction 
or at least a, a helpful model depiction of what's actually going on when we process information, then that suggests to us that the more memories that we can have of different kinds of movements of all different sorts, the more options we've got when it comes to response selection. And so that should trigger this thought, hopefully, that the purpose of training and practice then would be to provide the body with a memory of as many available responses to select from as possible. So if this model uh, accurately reflects or represents what's actually going on in terms of our information processing, then it would make sense, therefore, from a training perspective to try and get into the, into the memory as many different available responses as we possibly can. And that, that's what training is, or at least to some extent. Training is about um, refining and honing certain kinds and, and varieties of skilled movements so that they're accessible to us when we need them in a game situation. So we've got a, a, a large bank of memories, a large bank of available responses stored away that we can choose from so that we can select just the right skill in just the right format and in just the right form for the particular demands of that moment in that game. So the expanded information model includes this idea of memory. And that's only one way of thinking about memory and it's a disputed way of thinking about memory and it's something we'll pick up again in, in later videos. But Simply for now, one way of thinking about memory is as a bank of available responses that we can we can access and choose from. And the bigger that bank of responses, the more likely we are or the more able we are to select the correct or most useful or optimal response in any given situation. Um, moving on then to add a little more to this model, we want to include the idea of feedback. Now, this is precisely the same idea that we included when we talked about the simple processing model. Of course, again, once output has been made, once you've made your movement, once you've performed your skill, the external environment, hopefully, that's the, the point of the skill, hopefully the external environment has now been changed. And so now there are external conditions that are changed, and so new inputs will arrive. However, whilst there is, of course, extrinsic feedback, that is, as soon as a movement is made, the external conditions are changed, this model, this expanded information processing model, also includes the idea that there is intrinsic feedback as well. And this intrinsic feedback is, is feedback um, that is provided to the body from the body. So it's not simply a change in... Um, in the external environment, which has happened, but also there's a change, and you can think of it in this way, a change in the internal environment. So the information that's being sent back from the body to the body is also going to be helpful in understanding or appreciating the new situation or the new scenario that we find ourselves in as soon as we've performed or even as soon as we've begun to perform a skill. And this is essentially down to proprioceptive feedback, that, that sense by which we uh, have an inbuilt internal sense of the movement of our bodies, uh, the strength of the contraction of our muscles, our speed, uh, our direction uh, through space and so on. That information is also being fed back into our perceptive senses and that information again helps us to decide what our next response should be so we have again this kind of this sense of the processing um, being a kind of a loop but as it loops round, not only are we affecting the external environment and therefore new inputs are coming in from the external environment we're also uh, affecting and changing the internal environment in terms of the, the, our, our body movements and our body position and our body shape and our body speed and so on. That information is also coming back round in a loop and we're perceiving both the internal and the external information and together those things when we decide of those things what we want to focus on 
then we can make a new response selection and a new response program and so on. So we continue to loop round, but rather than just as with the previous model, um, just account for external feedback, this model count accounts for both external or extrinsic feedback and also intrinsic or internal feedback, which is fed back to the body from the body by the means of proprioception. So let's just finish up now with a couple of limitations of this model as well. So it's solved a couple of the limitations of the simple processing model in that it accounts for the decision making and, and what's actually going on in that central phase. And it also accounts for both the external and the internal aspects of feedback. But it doesn't solve all the problems. It's a model. It can't solve all the problems. It can't it can't include all the complexity of what's actually going on. And so our first our first um, limitation, I guess, can be that just very simply that human cognition is obviously always going to be vastly more complicated than a model can possibly describe or even help us to explain. So that's the first limitation. The second limitation is that we're essentially using computer like language here. When we're talking about the body and the brain, the mind and the muscles, we're talking about language that we would normally use for uh, describing what's going on in a computer. But of course, the point is that we're not computers. Uh, we're, we're vastly more complex than computers. And so by using computer like language to describe how we select skills and perform skills, that can sometimes obscure the impacts of emotion and other situational factors on our processing, on our information processing. So emotion has an impact when we feel sad, when we feel happy, that can actually affect the way that our cognition works. And the situation perhaps that we find ourselves in, whether we're too cold or too hot, whether we're in a stress situation in particular, those sorts of things, those kinds of situations can also have an impact on the processing itself. So whereas the model itself is helpful um, and useful in that it breaks down various steps of what's going on, it doesn't encapsulate the, the kind of the entirety of the complexity of human cognition and human emotion and really the whole embodied human person. So it's a useful model, but it doesn't tick all the boxes. It doesn't explain everything. But then again, it's not supposed to. Well, I hope that's been helpful uh, to get your head around the, the ways that we can think about information processing as far as skill acquisition and skilled performance is concerned. Please like the video. Uh, don't forget to subscribe and uh, hit the notification bell so that you can get notified every time I upload any new videos. If you've got any questions, please put them in the comments and I'll, I'll definitely get back to you. Um, but other than that, hope that's been helpful. See you in the next video. Take care.